Hello, this is the hatchetjob.com gaming netcast with a review of Puzzle Strike Bag of Chips, the deluxe version. Now, Puzzle Strike is arguably a board game version of Puzzle Fighter, and if you don't know what Puzzle Fighter is, let's have a quick look at that so that when I describe this, it makes sense. Puzzle Fighter is basically Street Fighter Cross with Tetris, so you can see I have my Street Fighter characters here. So I choose Ryu, and then I get my opponent, and you can see just like in Tetris, I'm on the left. Unlike in Tetris, I have gems that keep on stacking up. But when I have enough gems put together, you can see they get large there at the bottom, like the green one. When I destroy those blue gems on my side, they appear on my opponent's side, they drop down there. And if I make my gems larger by combining them, they send even more gems to my opponent's side. So just breaking ones and twos, like I'm doing here with the red, doesn't do much. What you want to do is make your gems as large as possible like I'm doing with the yellow. See how it got bigger there? I come down here, break this big yellow set, bang 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 bang, and look at my opponent's screen now and it just fills up with stuff. Cool, I hope that's reasonably clear for you. Now, this is the deluxe version. The difference between that and other versions is that this is uh, all wood, this has a grain to it, and this is printed on, it's not a sticker or paper, you might have noticed there's no there's no uh, bottom, uh, no side here, no side here, and that's because they they've just fallen off. Uh, which, you know, if one side had fallen off, I would have been okay with it. I could glue it because this comes from a small independent uh, board game and video game designer. It's basically a one-man band. But with two, I am a bit annoyed, especially because it cost me about 111 pounds, including postage. Now, although it did come off, at least it has these padded bits so it fits nicely on the wooden box when it goes on there. So if I move this out of the way, what you get in the box? Well, you get this nice manual and here you can see the different characters that you can play with. They all have different uh, special abilities in there. And you get this chip, or I got this chip which basically says this is the first of the first editions get four bags because you don't have a hand of cards you put your chips in here and shuffle them and then you draw them and these bags are kind of velour and I believe that the uh, standard editions just come with normal bags and as you can see there are four bags because it's a four player game and it plays just as well with two as with four it's just a different feel and then here is the meat and potatoes of the game as I said you don't have cards you have these these chips so they are poker chip sized uh, beach. There were some manufacturing issues which I'll talk about at the end of the review but I believe that they are in the process of being sorted, sorted or they may have been sorted already and I think there are 330 or so of them and they all do different things. Okay let's just have a look at the chips that are available to you so running from left to right those green and gold chips with the numbers on they act as two things they are money so you need to buy those in order to buy stuff right and they also act as the gems that fall down to the side of your screen, uh, like in Puzzle Fighters. They have two uses. Then the, the purple chips you can see there, they are the ones that allow you to squash your gems together to make them larger, like in Puzzle Fighter. They are also your weapons. Without those, you can't actually send gems uh, from, from your side of the screen, for example, to the opponent. Uh, and then we have these chips here with the banners on, those are actions. So they allow you to do different things. They might give you, give you an, extra, an extra move, they allow you to attack your opponent to defend yourself. And there are 24 different types of action, but you only get 10 per game. So basically you can adjust how the game plays if you want to have one that's more to do with attacking people or one that's more to do with tri trickery or you can have games without any attacks at all. Uh, then at the end there we have a little chip which is called a wound chip it's basically a dud so if you put that uh, if you give that to your opponent it kind of takes up space in their inventory but it doesn't do anything and then you can just see a, a, an AA battery there it's just a standard battery so you can gauge how big the chips are okay so this is my hand running from left to right you can see this this is my gem pile so basically this is my side of the screen in Puzzle Fighter right as my gem pile gets bigger, and that means uh, its value increases, so for example here its value is 5, and my gem pile's value increases the closer I am to losing. It's like my screen filling up in Puzzle Fighter. Here we have a bag I used to shuffle, uh, and my hand, so this is what I get to play with this round, and here we have my discard pile. So, 
something that's interesting about uh, Puzzle Strike is that you build your hand as you go along, okay? So if you played Magic the Gathering, you know that what you do is you have a deck of cards and you construct your deck beforehand, so you choose what to play with. Uh, and then you shuffle it up and you play the game and you you know what cards you have but they you get them randomly and that's pretty much how it works in, in Puzzle Strike except you don't build your deck before you play you build it as you play so start of my turn my gem pile I have to add one to my gem pile I have to increase it by one so I go over here add one to my gem pile my gem pile is now worth five People can send me gems, they, could, they can attack me just like in Puzzle Fighter, but whatever happens I have to add one to my gem pile. Start of my turn. I then go to my hand and I've got some money. Uh, although this and this are the same, when these chips are in your gem pile you can't use them as cash, they're only to, to basically put you in danger. So I've got some money and I've got some chips that I can do stuff with. So first thing I do is my action, In my action I get to do something, so I have a, a combine and a crash gem and I'll go through how these work exactly later but I'm just going to keep this simple so I'm going to go over here get my combine uh, I get to squash these two together because combines make my, my gems bigger like in Puzzle Fighter so, so I've used my combine and my crash gem sorry I squashed it so I have to get a two and my crash gem I, I send this to somebody Okay, so I always send to the person on my left so I send it to them just like me crashing their screen in Puzzle Fighter, I get rid of my chips and they appear on theirs. So that's that. So I've done my actions. Now I'm into my buy phase. I've got some money here. So I've got uh, f currency worth five, say five pounds or dollars or credits or rupees if you want a Zelda reference or an Indian reference. So I'm going to go and buy something. I'm not going to look at how much this stuff is worth. I'm just going to grab something. Oh, I bought this. Woohoo, fantastic. Done that, so I've done my uh, action, I've done my buy, I now discard it, okay? Now, what I would do then is go to my bag and shake up my bag and draw chips. And then those chips would be my hand for the next round, okay? I can't do that, so I'm, I would take this stuff, put it into my bag, shake it all up, and draw some more chips for my hand. So we're just going to imagine that happens here, put this down like that. So imagine I've shaken up the bag and drawn stuff out. Now something important is why you go your, get your hand at the end of your turn. And that's because, depending on how many gems you have in your gem pile, the more chips you get to draw, okay? So remember I said that if your gem pile is, has a total value of 10 or more, you lose. So basically the closer you are to losing, the more stuff you draw to give you a chance to come back. So that's why you always do it at the end of your turn, because somebody might send you loads of gems and you might have nine gems in there and you think, shit, what can I do, what can I do? But you get to draw so many more of these, you have loads of tactical options. But of course those ta tactical options, what you get to do depend on what you bought during previous rounds. So for example, uh, if I spend loads of money on these I might fill up my bag with that stuff but then I don't really have any tactical options here I can I can do things with my gem pile but I can't deflect stuff I can't look in other people's hands um, or somebody might have filled up my my bag with these so when I shake stuff up I get loads of those duds and I can't do anything so that's basically how the game works in that you're your gem pile keeps on filling up and people send you stuff and you have to figure out what your strategy is to get rid of it and of course your strategy will depend what character you've chosen because there are 10 characters remember in Puzzle Fighter there are different characters they have different abilities same thing here some characters are really good at attacking uh, another character can can steal chips from people somebody else can attack but it but it increases her gem pile so basically she can trade damage to herself but damage to somebody else a third character can, can kind of deflect things that come to him. Um, but you don't have the character skills all the time. You, you, they're in your bag and you kind of get them randomly. So when you get one, you need to decide, do I play it now or do I play it later? I was at 10 at the end of my turn, I think it was. And I drew stuff, st stuff out of my bag and I basically had this amazing combo of stuff that if I hadn't bought the right stuff beforehand and I hadn't got the luck to get it then, 
I would have been wiped out. But I got this stuff. You know, in the, in the Puzzle Fighter video I showed you, when you saw the gem crashing and he went bang, 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 bang. That's what it feels like. When you get it right, you get this amazing combo of stuff together. It feels really good. But of course, although I get rid of my stuff, the person who I attack, his pile then fills up and he has the same thing. He gets to draw more stuff, so he might have a chance to come back too. And I remember I played one game online where I chose a guy who, his, his special power was to stop people kind of using these during their turn. So basically, he couldn't stop you attacking, but he could stop you having different tactical options. And this guy kept on swearing at me over the internet because my character was the perfect counterbalance to his. Now, the game is, you know, it's going to be well balanced. The guy designed it, rebalanced Puzzle Fighter HT, so he knows what he's doing. But there will still be those instances where you think, man, this isn't fair. But I think the more you play the game, the more you learn what to buy and when, or, you know, when to attack people and what, what of these to buy, depending on what your character is, I think the, the richer it will get. As I said, there were some production issues uh, with, with my copy. None of these chips are perfect, some aren't printed correctly, some of the printing is off-center, some of the chips are damaged or they haven't been cut out properly so they've kind of got spikes and splinters sticking off them. But as I said, those issues are going to be or have already been resolved and that's what the designer told me, David Serlin. So I do think the game is worth getting. I think if you want a game where you can think, where you have to think on the fly, have to adapt on the fly to what you're doing, where you want asymmetry, where you want different characters, yes, definitely investigate it. If you like Tetris, or if you like Puzzle Fighter, uh, no question you should get this game. If you like Puzzle Fighter, just go and buy the game. The only thing I would suggest is, maybe hang off buying the deluxe version. I know that uh, Serling Games is coming out with a standard version that will have a different type, I think it's cardboard printing. And so that's probably the one to go for. It'll definitely be cheaper, and I suspect that the quality will be higher. Puzzle Strike, bag of chips, serlingames.com. Do go and check it out.